you want to change it? Like, do you want to move it a bit? Because it's all like wonky. <laughs> Evenly enough. All right. What's going on, everybody? It's another week of the F word. I am your host, G, and with me this week is. Your boy, Big F's. Big F's now. Envy. Envy. <laughs> I just noticed it's the first time I've ever had this box instead of that one. You know what? Oh, yeah. It's... I don't. I didn't consciously switch them up for any reason, but I when I did the uh, thing with Jimmy, oh, I was realizing I'm like, I need. A better one because I knocked it off a couple times. Um, what's going on? We're back. We're live. Uh, we are obviously post. We are one week from when we saw Endgame, or one week in a few hours because we saw it at eleven o'clock or whenever the the thing started. True, true, true. Um, it's making all the money in the world. Yeah, right now as it it's, deserves. It's probably a couple weeks away from breaking Avatar's record because Avatar's record was accumulated over time. Sure. Um, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Hope everyone's doing good. I already see our Turo is here. Um, and, uh, yeah. How was your guys' week? You saw Endgame three times. In total, yeah. In total. All times in theaters? Did you watch the link? All, th- all theaters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you looked at the link. Well, yeah. like... Did you watch Link? No, I just watched the last, like... I the watched... Final, that, that, I that, that, that actually, final battle, yeah. So, they just linked the final battle a couple times, and then someone, I guess, linked the entire movie on YouTube. I saw that, but no spoilers, I, by the way. Yeah, we're not gonna yeah. we're not gonna talk spoilers. Us, the chat is, you yeah. know, if you haven't seen an end game, the chat is fair game, you know. <laughs> well, and I feel like a movie like this, because even the Russos, you put out that thing where it's saying Monday. like, as of Monday, the spoiler ban is off. Like the next Monday, this Monday yeah. or this Monday that passed, it doesn't give you the right to go and tell people spoilers that you know haven't seen it, but like, yeah, yeah, if you yeah. want to see, it, you would have. So yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, we had a pretty decent time, not uh, not going live, not that it was. Not that we don't love. Sorry, I'm fixing my microphone. Like you were not first. You're like very far behind. There we go. Sorry if it sounds weird. Um, Yeah, we had we were in like the spare room. Yeah, yeah. And we just had like chill conversations. Double double the time for like it was like a big week for like long episodes. You had three hours long for the deep dive. We had like around two hours each for both. Yes. Weeks. Yeah. Yeah. um, If you haven't listened to it and you have seen. End game. You can go back into our archive about one episode before, and um, which was episode fifty five, and it was our deep. It was my number deep dive number ten. So that was cool. Not planned. Like when that happens, and I did yeah a full breakdown. Like we went scene by scene. Yeah, it was much more. Uh, I would say it was much more cohesive than our Infinity War one because Jimmy had just seen it and he had made some notes. So then we were able to kind of follow a, a certain pattern which was really cool yeah. and um yeah i think it went really good it already like surpassed a lot of our normal episodes in 24 hours or something which was awesome Sweet. and uh yeah it got me super jacked because i was originally going to go see it that day oh yeah yeah but then that didn't happen or sorry the day before but that didn't happen and then i was so jacked to see it monday when I so it far again. every theater i've seen it in packed the gills like not full packed yeah but like you might see at the start of the week you might have some seats open and then by by actual movie time there'll be someone that'll pick up those obscure like one-off seats here and there but it'll be in theaters for a very long time we'll also get to questions later on so yeah ignoring you is it cycling through or is it just frozen there as long as it's still feeding it like oh there it is okay hello hello everybody yeah awkward so as you get it there um, I saw a tweet from a gentleman by the name of Scott Mance, Scott Movie Mance. You could probably find him at Collider, and you can. He used to be like an Axis Hollywood guy. Uh, he says Avengers Endgame crossed 1.2 billion overseas and has now grossed 1.664 billion worldwide. It's set to cross 2 billion worldwide this weekend and should pass Avatar, which is at 2.78 billion, as the highest grossing movie of all time in a couple more weeks. That's pretty big. People's response to that though is that wait for Avatar two. And all I'm going to say is Avatar 2 isn't going to make a lot of money unless they have new technology. Because that's the only reason Avatar made a lot of money was because it was like one of the first 3D films. Yeah, and it's been relatively panned yeah. since it's come out. Like, not panned, but people don't like I just, it as I, much. I tried watching it. I couldn't get into it. Like, I found it really boring. But I was also younger. So maybe, mm-hmm. like, it's one of those things. But I just didn't get it. I was kind of like, whatever. I like Pocahontas better. I hear it. Yeah, like a retelling. It, it yeah. pretty much is. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't think any of the Avatar sequels are going to be anything because oh. i think it's been too long since it's happened and people just don't care anymore 
And uh, also, yeah, yeah. This is, there's that. a couple things I wanted to bring up because I, I thought about it the second time I watched uh, Endgame. Um, not enough people are giving credit to Joss Whedon. No. And the reason is, is because if Avengers never worked, we mm-hmm. would not have Endgame. And two, I think this is the only time culturally where all, like almost everybody in the world is collectively celebrating a movie together and has gone on this journey so. together. And the that's majority, what makes yeah. the impact of the movie for me even bigger because you know how you have people that are like, oh, we watch, we saw Empire Strikes Back when we like first, we saw it when it came out on theaters yeah. and or we saw the first Star Wars in theaters. It's like, well, we all together went on an 11 year, 22 movie journey to get to Endgame. Yeah. And that's that's nothing to sniff at. Like, I think that the well, I don't think we'll ever see anything like it, mm-hmm. at least not for a very, very, very long time. Yeah. And even if it does happen that, let's say, DC, for instance, ends up doing a slate of a bunch of them, they do good, and we have Justice League 1, 2, and 3 and stuff, and they're great. Two, two and or, three. Or, sorry, ju- great. two and three yeah. <laughs> um, with, with their new slate and stuff. I don't. It will not have the same impact. And no. a lot of it is predicated on the fact that Robert Downey Jr. was not, like, people didn't want him. Mm-hmm. I think he was in jail, not, like, before it, it came out. Yeah. He wasn't the actor that they wanted. That movie shouldn't have done very well because no one really knew well, they were um, also, like, Iron Man. The script as a shot, yeah, because all like right. a lot of improv and shit. Yeah, and then you get then you start throwing Captain America in, which was lukewarm for a lot of people, mm-hmm. and then you get Thor, which was also lukewarm for people. But then they brought it with Avengers, which yeah. again, thank Joss Whedon because, mm-hmm. like, they did it, and then they were like, you know what, we can do this, and then they just kept going and going. Then you've got James Gunn, who brought us a raccoon in a tree that we all loved and introduced that. And like there are so many moving parts that had to work well to yeah. get to Endgame. Yeah. And it's like it's mind blowing how it happened. The thing is, nothing, none of those were uh, like, oh, that was terrible. It was just, you know what? Not many people like certain ones as well as the other. We went through our entire list. Right. And yeah, there's obviously, a movie for everybody. Exactly. And the thing is, like Hulk was at the lowest end of that. And yeah. then we put Winter Soldier at the very top and yep. well-deserved on all fronts. But realistically, none of them were like, oh, this was like a one or a two ever. Yeah. So, like, I know you guys rated a few of them really low, but sure. I don't think anything was really under the four range. Well, and I think the, the <clears throat> ratings were within the MCU. Yeah. Like, I, I think if you were to take, again, I've mentioned it a thousand times, even Captain Marvel, I, there are other movies that are worse than Captain Marvel. Yeah. Well, we based it on enjoyment, though. Not like There was a True. lot of it, yeah. Mine True. was a little bit on, like, on some technical stuff, and, um, yeah. and a lot of it was uh, importance to the MCU as well. But for the most part, it was enjoyment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's going to make all the money. Do you want to run down some of the questions that are coming in? Do you want to go yes. through some of the Jesse story or do you want to leave that to last? I think the Jesse story would be funny to go right, right now just because it's kind okay. of the same well, end game right now. So I big like beefy, it. real quick, we'll do this. We need to know your top three Marvel movies. So I assume MCU. I'm going to say my favorite MCU film. Like I didn't rate it this way just because I knew it wasn't like the greatest. My favorite one, I think, is Homecoming just because... I love Spider Man. It was fun to see him back in the MCU with all the characters. Oh yeah. Second, Infinity War. Third, Winter Soldier. Okay. In terms of like like great, this is just enjoyment. Like in terms of better. Like I know Spider Man mm-hmm. Homecoming isn't the greatest Marvel movie of all time, but yeah, enjoyment level. Hmm. Yeah. B. Uh, reg- uh, I guess we're including the Avengers movies too now. That's I what guess. makes it difficult. Yeah. So probably Infinity War is still actually above for me. Like I'd put Infinity War, Endgame, and probably Thor Ragnarok. That's top, your list. Top three, I would say. Yeah. Well, uh, you had on your post, which one do you guys like better, Infinity War or Endgame? What were you getting more of? Uh, people, like, at that time, like, a lot of people are just saying, like, it's, I couldn't even count because I didn't really look at it today, but a lot of people are saying Endgame, but a lot of people I've noticed have been saying Endgame because of the final fight, mm-hmm. which I said, like, I commented saying Infinity War is better as a film, yeah. which a lot of people did say too, but Endgame has the more hype moments and, like, the more, like, payoff, yeah. which is why a lot of people are saying Endgame, but, like, as a film, yeah. Infinity War is better. For moments, end game's better. Yeah. Well, I'll give um I'm gonna I'm gonna take end game out of my list. I took and, it out and, and there's a there's a reason for again. that, but I would go I would go Winter Soldier, Infinity War, and probably Ragnarok, maybe. Something like that. Um but what I would do with Endgame is I it's in its own thing. For me personally, it's in its own class. And the reason is is because that movie on its own, sure, you can be like, yeah, there's some slow bars, there's this, there's that, whatever, and you can pick it apart. Mm-hmm. 
In the context of the entire universe, though, it is absolutely the top because it is that rising tide that raises all the ships of the MCU. Yeah. Like, it makes all the movies, and I'm not going to say which specific ones, but even some of the ones that aren't as beloved, Mm -hmm. even better just based on what happens in Endgame and how it, like you mentioned, pays that off. It almost, it essentially covers every single MCU movie in one way or another. And it retroactively makes them that much better. Like, it elevates the entire universe. Fills gaps where you like, okay, well, how did this happen? What did this? Even on a small front, right? But it was was definitely amazing. And to the point where it even harkens back to uh, the TV show. There's some points in there that harken to the TV show, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the Peggy Carter, um, some comic stuff. Like, the amount that it covered... Yeah. And what I mentioned last week when we talked and with Jimmy as well, this was the perfect this is the definition of perfect fan service. Yeah. And for a movie like this, we deserved to get the fan service. Yep. And that's why it's it's on its for me it's on its own. Like this mm-hmm. is yeah, I don't know. It was crazy. Okay. Moving on, Blake says I talk or how do you Shaden Kimball says you guys rock, so thank you to that. You rock. Blake said I talked with Chris from the movie. Uh, theater and he said they sold out Sunday morning at 10 11 and 12 amazing for Endgame which Sunday morning yeah that's mm-hmm. good uh people were talking about you know they liked Avatar uh all powerful hypnotote says hey guys hope you three have a good week also do your job Anthony hope you have a great week I don't <laughs> uh, Jesse's here now so I am going to do the Jesse story now so everybody pay attention buckle in for the Jesse this story. this will be it's about Endgame spoilers but I won't say the spoilers I'll just okay. kind of put in uh so Jesse, there's two versions. I'm gonna start off with the less funny one and the more funny one. So Jesse's playing Overwatch competitive, and when you're playing competitive, you have to like actually in game chat and talk to your teammates. Yeah. So they were losing, and some guy was bashing Jesse, saying like, you know, like it's your fault, you're shit. This is why you're lo- like why we're losing. And Jesse claims that it wasn't the case, and he was doing good. Okay. So Jesse said, "Hey, have you seen Endgame yet?" He said, uh, "No, I'm gonna see it sometime this week." And he drops the biggest death spoiler. And the guy's like, oh my god, leave the game. Leave the game right now. And they left the game. Oh, good on man. you, Jesse. That's pretty funny. That's and here's good. the second one. So he works at EB Games as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> Jazzy for me, I won the game. <laughs> so he works at EB Games as well. And what, he was working there. And some other guy in the mall came to him and started saying, like, he was shit at his job and all this. And he was, like, lazy or whatever. Mm-hmm. So Jesse was sitting there. And he was uh, putting away Endgame Funko Pops. And he's looking at him like, hey, have you seen Endgame yet? He's like, oh, no, like I'm waiting for my girlfriend to go see it. And he has a second death character in his hand. <laughs> oh, well, I don't get too attached. And he slides it over. <laughs> <laughs> so Jesse's going over fucking. I give him props. Like That's hilarious. That is <laughs> mad props. You know what? In an era where spoilers are a big deal, you do oh, not yeah. want to mess with some people because yeah. somebody might have information you may not have and you may need or want. Big time. Oh, yeah. But I think it redeems him for spoil, uh, almost spoiling Infinity War last year. Yeah, that's true. Is that what he did? Yeah, with the meme. He saw a meme saying Tony Stark dies in Infinity War. Yeah. And he fucking sends it to our group chat like a day before we see Infinity War. Well, it, but it didn't end up being true anyway. Yeah, but he didn't know it at the time. Yeah, that's fair. And- he deserved it. <laughs> wow. That's some uh, That is awesome. That's some gangster stuff so, uh, right there. You know, don't fuck with Jesse if you want to go see a movie that he's already seen. Yeah. Well, I did have an episode. One of our episodes is called uh, Jesse's the Man. But that was in regards to him buying you Red Dead, so yeah. which is still still pretty awesome. Not it's still enough. high up there. Not you, Jesse. I'm sorry. Sorry, man. There's another Jesse down here. Not you. Um, <laughs> okay, let's get through some of the new stuff. There's actually some pretty sad stuff uh, mm. that we'll run through. Uh, some of you may know some of these names. Some of you may not. Roger Moore died at 89. Sir Roger um, Moore. Sir Roger Moore, sorry. Uh, he was James Bond for a while. Um, I think that was his like most famous thing. I, 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 would I don't say remember so, yeah. much else from him. Um, and then we had Peter Mayhew, Chewbacca. He that's died crazy. April 30th of this week. Um, yeah. That's a big one. Yeah, and he was not young, young, but he was... Here, I think he was around 70. 79, was and then Roger Moore was 89, so... Yeah. Um, so that was, you know, that's kind of shitty. You yeah. know, the, the, the main Chewbacca, the guy, like... At least he finished off the trilogy, so... That's true. Mm-hmm. And then uh, another one, which is kind of more for me, uh, John Singleton. Uh, he was yeah. the he directed Boys in the Hood, mm-hmm. and and Boys in the Hood is is actually one of those movies that it, it's a it's it culturally Im, it impacted Hollywood in such a way because movies like that were not a thing that they were doing like they've done them sparsely but yeah that movie was definitely like I remember watching it when I was in high school and I've watched it a lot 
Uh, he also did Too Fast, Too Furious, which for some of you out there that know me, um, you know, it's one of those super, super cheesy, not that great movies, but I just watch it all the time to quote it. Uh, Mac, if you're watching or listening, that one's for you, buddy. Um, he also did a bunch of other ones. So, uh, you know, that kind of sucks. Some legends in, in movie uh, history. Um, what else do I have? I said Endgame that made a shit ton of money. There was the GTA leaks. Um, well, they've been going on for a while. Like These oh. ones were more uh, concrete. I, I got these leaks from whatculture.com, their YouTube channel, yeah. and then they got it from another one. A lot of this stuff was taken off, though. Yeah. So supposedly the GTA 6 is going to be three cities, Vice City, Liberty City, and a part of San Andreas, which might be mm. um, Los Venturas. Is that the one? The Vegas one in uh, yeah, Grand Theft Auto 3 yeah. or whatever it was. No, not 3. San Andreas. Yeah. Because um, we've already had San Andreas. Yeah. And then it's coming for the PS5 and you will be starting. Supposedly, you're starting as a small time guy and working your way up to become the drug kingpin. Something we've already seen a bunch of times before. Yeah. But again, it's been taken down. Unsubstantiated. Guys, what would you guys like to see from GTA 6? Hmm. Uh, Just good online. I guess. On like Red Dead 2. You're just focused on the online? Well, that's all I played GTA 5 for. Really? I don't know. It's fun. I haven't played GTA 5 in forever, and I never yeah. really got into the online gameplay, so I, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of whatever. Years. Once upon a, once in a while, I'd probably like jump on and just go do a massive like massacre and just try to get all my stars up. Just Tuesday stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just, just let the catharsis. Like, let you yeah, cathar- I got I got a cathart. Your heart out. Exactly. Cathart your heart out. So yeah, GTA is the way I did it, and it was fun, and that was it. But I haven't played in uh, phew, I would say a year at least. Oh, I haven't played in a while either. Yeah. I was going to replay it, and I did start the story and replay it, mm-hmm. um, and then I ended up getting Red Dead, and I just dove right the Have fuck in. Have you finished in. it yet? Or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, that one was, that game is something special. There, there, was, there was something special about it, uh, and I could almost say that Arthur Morgan it can be put in the, in that kind of talk of some of the greatest, so, like, PlayStation characters, or just video game characters. Mm-hmm. Like, it was such a wonderful story. Wonderful characterization. There's so many good things to it outside of the technical aspect. But, yeah. you know, I was talking about that last time when I said, like, it's on a technical aspect, it's crazy good. Yeah. Right? But uh, for even from a story aspect and what they were able to do is just insane. Also, before we go on, sorry, KF is back. Hey. She had some family drama and all that. It's or, been a long family, ass time. And drama, so welcome back. It has been a long ass time. And again, like I said, it feels like it's been forever since we did a live, which it's only been two weeks. Did you get, but... I will say, like I said, I do enjoy the whole kind of just chilling out, don't have the camera going, yeah. and you can just uh, just talk. Just talk. Um, all right. Oh, one other thing. Man, I realized it on Monday. I know we did the F that on the trailers, before trailers and commercials. Like, right after three trailers, before Endgame started, they threw a fucking Mazda commercial in. I was Always. so mad. Always. I'm like, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Like, always always a last minute fuck. car one. Like, I don't understand. I don't get it. I'm, I'm looking at the clock. The movie is supposed to start at 630 and it started at 648 or something like that. And I'm just like, we went through four or five car commercials. I only saw three actual trailers. Mm-hmm. Like, it's getting out of hand. I don't know. Yeah, I, I didn't realize when we uh, uh, fucking watched Endgame on last Thursday. That there were like rarely any movie commercials or no. track is trails. It's all but. fucking car commercials. It's all like corporate fucking shit like but that. Like, here's, what's your target? Or like what's your target audience for those commercials? Like, do you think I want to go out after Endgame and go buy a car? Never. It's too late. It's not going to happen. Yeah. It's not going to happen. It's Same so thing annoying. In, uh, Arturo's theater car commercials, too. Like, well, and the thing is, it's it's mashed. You have a couple of car commercials before the main trailers. You have all your movie trailers, like they had the Fate of the Furious, they had the Story the, Four, they had the um the, the popcorn people, and then they started into that it. one yeah. needs to be retired. Like, figure something else new. No, they like, need to come get rid on. of it entirely. Yeah, and then and then they throw in one last minute car commercial. BMW gets thrown in there too. I was so mad. Like everything. Like it's. I'm like, get it the fuck out yeah. of here. Get Endgame memes are amazing, out. though. Might I add? Oh. Oh. They've just been perfect. I'm sorry. I'm gonna the Vince McMahon one. I'm gonna say this. Uh, oh, you're so, gonna put me on blast. <laughs> oh yeah, Charles if, Boyle. If, yeah. If you, guys, if you guys have ever seen Brooklyn Nine Nine, you probably remember an episode where Charles Boyle was kept out of the group chats for obvious reasons. <laughs> well, our new addition to the F word, our new permanent addition, uh, V over here, 
joined our chat, which was essentially us just saying, hey, are we recording tonight or not? Whatever, blah, blah. And yesterday, was it yesterday? Uh, it, it was a couple before. days. It was a couple, couple days, days ago. He decided to just flood the chat with about 10 memes, a bunch of Game of Thrones memes. And, yeah, and some Endgame ones. And some Endgame ones. I didn't get that Endgame one until Soph, Soph actually got it before I did. For some reason, it didn't click. <laughs> but anyways, so I sent him a message outside of the chat and being like, hey, bud, we kind of don't do memes. So if you want to just relax a little bit, that'd be great. I just counted it was 11. So, oh. okay. So he that counted. That day or in total? That day. That no. day. Total, I counted total. I was one off. <laughs> so 11 memes in the chat in one day. The kid shows up two weeks ago in the chat. And then Anthony's like, we've done three in the entirety of the You're chat. You're welcome. Those are rookie numbers, you that guys. Also you got to bump those numbers up. That was, that was also a reference to Brooklyn Nine-Nine where Amy's like, yeah. you've sent like a total of 70 texts. The group is a total has sent three. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was just it was just ridiculous. Um, we're, if, if it continued, like right now, if okay. I don't care. Kick we, me out. No, 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 no. We'll, we'll, we, would, we would have an intervention first, yeah, and we shit. would have a, a, a meme Again, intervention. You're going to walk in for a live show. It's going to be How About Your Mother's Style yeah, intervention. Yeah, intervention. The whole banner in the back, and the whole episode would be devoted to your obsession with these memes. And you were sending them to me for a while, but that's fine because it's just you and me. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, there's other people in the chat, and you just got to control it a little bit better. And they should enjoy them, too. <laughs> there's there's a there's a limit. I did enjoy my one my one that I sent today was that gold. Those were good. And then the Vince McMahon one. That, again, after I got it, it was yeah. really good. Which Vince McMahon one? Where am I looking? The Which even rings. He, yeah, even oh, uh, yeah. Even actually, I, I posted that was the one I liked. I put, yeah, like, yeah. stole it and posted it. Yeah, I like how that. If one, you know, you know. <laughs> I like how that one guy was fucking like. Um, can you please credit the Reddit user? It's like, and, and your response is the best. My friend sent me send it to me. If you could find the Reddit user. I'll give them all the credit of the world. Like, I feel like there's certain people in your chat or just in general. Like, I was going through a bunch of videos on YouTube this week and I was looking in the chats. I'm like, it seems like that's all they're like. They just want the credit. They just want to jump in and be like, excuse me, sir. Did you get the rights for this photograph that you're posting on your page? And you're like. No, dude. Somebody's fucking send it to people me. People just go out and they look for things to complain about. Like that Vince yeah. McMahon meme. Somebody, uh, why are you posting spoilers? I'm like, if you have not seen the movie, you wouldn't have no fucking clue there it's game related. No, I saw the movie, and yes, I'm a self-proclaimed idiot, but yeah. I still didn't get it right away. Yeah. These people in spoilers piss me off. My man. wife saw the movie once, and she like pointed it out right away. She started laughing. I was like, what are you laughing at? I want to hear about the joke. <laughs> Way um, to take that. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog talk? Yes. Oh. Okay, I don't. I don't mind how he looks. Like okay. he looks like a realistic hedgehog, like a like, realistic character. The thing is, though, when you, have you seen that side by side? So there's that missile thing, and like where he's like, what did he? What did he? I can't remember what he said. Anyways, where he so throws out all the missiles. But they have a side by side of what Sonic looked like in the games versus what they have in the movies, and it's like, yeah, that looks pretty stupid. More, more than just more his proportions. It literally looks like someone wearing a suit and a head versus what they actually have in the theater. Like, he's got longer legs, shorter torso, massive head, and then the eyes are more elongated. So that's what he should look like. But he looks like a, a basically a mascot. Seems like uh, Hollywood's having a really tough time with their blue characters. Apparently. With the other blue characters that we're talking about. The genie. Oh, uh, yeah. Because he was, he was the opposite. He had a very small Will Smith head yeah. for a giant genie body. That's true. When people are complaining, they were complaining and like, Whatever, it got somewhere because the director said, like, okay, we're changing it now. Yeah. But they, I saw some concept art for how people think it should look. And some of it looks awful. Like, yeah. a realistic Sonic, I'm sorry. Like, it just looks... It has to be cartoony to me, like, like his character. For realistic, sure. Realistic that way with the one eye shit, it's going to look awful. Mm-hmm. What I don't understand is we are living in a post-Spider-Verse era. And we saw how incredible the Spider-Verse was. Mm-hmm. Even just, uh, it was an amazing movie, but from a from an animation standpoint, why on earth wouldn't they just do this as a spider, like an that animated, t- an animated that's one? That's what they're doing for Mario, animated Mario movie. Yeah. DreamWorks. It, and that's what you have to do. But the original Mario live Mar- action was amazing. Terrible. <laughs> you're the worst. Um, but I think what they're doing yeah. is trying to ride the Pikachu coattails because they're like, oh, they made a mouse look like it. Yeah, but he kind of already like... Well, Pokemon could look like because they don't yeah. look weird. They just look like weird animals. Yeah. Like if Sonic anything, this makes you excited for potential live action. They could do like an Indigo Smash series. Smash Bros. Universe. Indigo, that'd be crazy. An Indigo Actually, series. Actually, if Netflix yeah. picks up and redoes the Indigo series with like could real life, that'd be Could you imagine if nuts. they just follow this? Yeah. Or Disney Plus streaming because they they're the going to take everything over. Nintendo Cinematic Universe. That would be crazy. All these movies build up to a Smash Bros. I'm still 
I think you had the was it you that had the question or someone else? I think it might could have been IGN, but like they said, like what uh, what Nintendo or what game would you like to see next as a live action? They had like God of War on there, and then Zelda was one of them. Zelda for sure. If they did the Ocarina of Time as it a movie, be like a TV show, I think like a Game of Thrones style TV. Show yeah, there's probably enough in there. It could probably pull it off. Definitely, that's a tough one because. Oh, you, you, really, you can completely mess it up, 100%. Yeah, and because people are like, okay, so what I've noticed in my travels, what I've noticed <laughs> is that everybody sees certain properties differently and they value certain properties differently. So mm-hmm. the reason why Hollywood has a tough time with sequels is that they lose sight of what made the original special. Yeah. So you take Die Hard, for instance. The first one was special because average guy in an extraordinary extraordinary situation and gets through it by the skin of his teeth Mm -hmm. then as they go on he ends up being a freaking superhero right yeah um even fast and fucking furious like it started with just car races nothing too crazy and then now they're fucking flying off helicopters in between buildings in dubai and then you've got the spin-off characters who that thing just looks all ridiculous yeah um it's that's the rocks f you to the vin diesel basically but it makes money so true it, they're we'll gonna they're gonna go for it. it makes money but my goodness yeah. is he trying so hard and but, he'll he'll do all right so it's but it's really hard to capture the essence of what made them great because the thing about video games that why they don't translate into movies is that you are the one that's changing and manipulating and driving the story forward mm-hmm you are the one that's controlling them and you feel like it's my actions, not my character's actions, but my actions through my character that are influencing everything around me. And and it's really, really hard to translate that into a one-off show, a movie or a TV show because that's where the beauty of the games are. At least that's my opinion. Yeah. I do think though overall the Sonic movie looks enjoyable. Yeah. Like I thought the trailer was kind of like... I don't, I'm not expecting anything great, but like just to like watch and just have, be a fun movie to Shut watch. Shut your brain off. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm. This is the first time I'm probably going to say this. Jim Carrey is too Jim Carrey in it. He kind of yeah, annoyed me in cringe. the beginning. Yeah, that was cringe. The way how he stopped mid sentence to turn away is like, yeah. mm-hmm. it's like, shut the fuck up. Like, who does that? So, who is this movie for then? Oh, it's for kids. Like, I know it's for kids. Yeah, like I, I'm putting this in the same boat as like the Dora the Explorer movie. Well, it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. It is not for my for me. It's not for my audience. Yeah. It feels like it's very geared towards kids. Well, go yeah. watch it if you want, but like, don't they're not making the movie for like fucking 50, or 34 year old guys, like, yeah. they're making it for kids, mm-hmm. yeah. Like the SpongeBob movie, they're not making it for like the fans of the original show, they're making it for a new generation. Although sure. the SpongeBob movie, the fans of the original show might actually go see, well, because they'll I be saw expecting it. I it was okay. <laughs> well, and, and if they're able to get that balance, because SpongeBob, I've never seen it in its entirety, I've probably yeah. seen like three episodes in total. Mm-hmm. But in those three episodes, I was like, oh, there's like stuff for adults here. Yeah. And I was talking to a friend of mine and, and he's got kids and he's like, there doesn't the kids shows these days are not as good as they used to be. Oh, yeah. And, and a lot of it is because they are really heavy on the kids side of things. Yeah. Whereas the older shows seem to actually blend the two together and yeah. be able to service both the parents watching. Shrek was, the and, I think, the number one person, that the number one movie that did that where you had enough of like the fairy tale side of things for the kids but yet you had those underlying jokes that only adults would get and enjoy themselves but even on the tv side like arthur for instance yeah arthur had adult themes to it and as well as for kids right um i think even the berenstein bears baron what is what is the actual bernstein bernstein bears actually had like they they had adult themes that the adults can look at it and be like, oh, that's responsible. This is good. I like this. Mm-hmm. And the kids can be like, oh, cool, cartoons. Yeah. But, uh, real quick before we move on. Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades. I don't know why. Ace of Spades <laughs> said, in retrospect, when has there ever been a spot on video game movie adaptation? Detective Pikachu, maybe. That could be the only one. I mean, Mortal Kombat, uh, the first one, is one people actually beloved. Like that's they, true. It's yeah. a beloved one. Yeah. But it's also really like cheesy and cringy. Detective Pikachu might be the old, and it like, legit one. Also, revive Pokemon Go. Like the amount of kids at my school playing Pokemon Go now is like yeah. insane. It's back, eh? Mm-hmm. Some uh. of the the Prince of Persia wasn't terrible. I enjoy it. I I don't know. Not a lot of people liked it. I saw it a while ago. But Prince of remember. But Prince of Persia was pretty good because like he had the same style and Jake Gyllenhaal did an amazing job. I was hoping they would take off with it and make more, but yeah, it didn't work out obviously. And that's they haven't. The made... white, that's when the whole whitewashing conversation started. I think was like him being the Prince of Persia. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, well, now they can reboot it with the guy who's doing Aladdin. <laughs> if he does very good. Yeah. Um, okay. We had a game. Uh, where do you guys want to go now? Uh, game What's, of Thrones? What do you have next? I, I literally just have Game of Thrones next. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I've got another discussion part, but it's piggybacking off Game of Thrones. Okay, go for it. Let's go into Game of Thrones and then hit it with right. whatever. 
Uh, we had the long night. Yep. The long awaited night. I've never seen spoilers for Game of Thrones. Yeah, spoilers yeah. for Game of Thrones. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but if you're following it by now, you've already seen it. You've seen it twice. Like literally to before you came here, you saw it. I was just watching. I never got to finish it, but I pretty much got close to the end. You just saw it with us. Yep. Um, we saw it all together on mm-hmm. Sunday. Uh, we've had time to let it marinate. Yep. Um, I've never seen the like the YouTubes so divided on a Game of Thrones show. Yeah. Episode. I, I've talked to you about this already. Yep. It is crazy how many people both absolutely hate it and are calling it the worst Game of Thrones episode. Game of Thrones is over. It's ruined. All mm-hmm. that stuff. And then on the other side, people that are they don't. I haven't seen anybody that absolutely loves it. Mm-hmm. Um, but at least they found more redeeming qualities to it. Yeah. Where do you guys stand? Well, I'm not like as huge a Game of Thrones fan as you guys are. Like, I don't think the ending was amazing, but I thought it was like. Everybody, I know a lot of people hate it for how the way the Night King died, but I thought it was like Arya is like that assassin who could like do it. I'm not going into details right now, but I thought it was enjoyable. <laughs> I thought so too. I liked it a lot. And you liked it better watching it the second time, like a lot of the stuff, like even early on, like you didn't finish the whole thing, but mm-hmm. when you watched it where you're like, I like this better, I like this better, or did you end it's, up finding... It's just the build up to everything, and you did, you had build up for two episodes basically, and then you had the actual intensity right before everything went off. Mm-hmm. And then, you know... We'll get into more details of what mm-hmm. I didn't like about it after you watch. Because, like, like I said, I I like to I, when I first watch it, I'm purely enjoying everything. I'm still immersed in the characters and the story and whatever. And then I can sit on it a little bit and say, okay, you know what? I I thought this was kind of dumb. I thought this was really good. Mm-hmm. They fell short on this. Blah blah blah. That mm-hmm. kind of stuff. I can be more critical, I guess you could say, post viewing. So, would you agree with the idea that they last Jedi'd? this episode that's what the that's what the majority of the people are comparing this episode to mm-hmm. and i'm going to go on record before we get in, even into that Arya stark is not a mary sue character Arya stark from season three i believe when she first met melisandre and yeah. she went on her journey she's gone through a lot of shit trained in the dark trained blind got stabbed almost died went through this whole story arc to be able to have the abilities to do what she did in this last episode so i if you think that she's a Mary Sue, then you do not know what a Mary Sue character is. In my opinion, Ray from Star Wars is one, and Captain Marvel is another. And what a Mary Sue is, and I'll I'll get the actual definition while you guys discuss. What do you guys think? So you were just saying um, I being the Mary, not, not being oh, yeah. a Mary Sue. What else we seen before? I had a thing. Well, how he digested it and thought about it. Oh yeah, yeah. Cool. I will say one thing I disliked about the episode a lot was the way it was shot because mm. at points it looked like really good in HD, and then there was like yeah. like I was talking to my. Uh, Teacher, so Mr. Gabe, if you're out there listening, because he said he would because of Game of Thrones, uh, he was saying like, he had to stop watching because his head hurt so much just from like the foggy effect. And, like, how, yeah, like, it was shitty. hard to yeah. watch. I, I feel they could have better done better lighting post credit. There was probably a few scenes that were beautiful, mm-hmm. like especially with the dragons up, up past the storm. That was the most part we get. But then I, I forgot the fact that HBO Canada doesn't get the full 4K release. Mm-hmm. We get throttled to maybe 720 oh, in wow. total. Why? That's just That's how they the flow. Same price? No, I don't know. I really don't. I, I just, this is just what the provider does for whatever reason. At the end of the day, so, so this is this is the definition of a Mary Sue is an idealized and seemingly perfect fictional character. Often, this character is recognized as an author insert or wish fulfillment. So, just perfect throughout start to finish yeah and just gets through everything with really no nothing in their way yeah they're good from start to finish you don't know why mm-hmm. everything like that and but they're just perfect everything about them is perfect and they didn't really have to go through anything that's a mary sue character so yeah. someone's calling you out saying or come kumar kumar says captain marvel is not a mary sue but after that definition i believe she is a mary sue I yeah. believe she's a Mary Sue too. Yeah, her challenges were not like so sure she may have a couple challenges, but no, it wasn't. I, I don't even think she had any challenges yeah, really. Like, like she got through, she skated through that entire movie with really no worries whatsoever. Yeah, um, she never had to over really overcome anything because she was just perfect and great at everything. At least the movie never showed us that she had to overcome. They had that one training sequence where he's like, "You got to control your emotions." That's not that's a just thing. her just being pissed off like a teenage. Like teenage angst, but, basically, at that point. But they're <laughs> th- so people are taking that as to be them pushing her down, 
that's not the case. Yeah. Right. Um, that's why I feel that Captain Marvel and again, Ray are Mary Sue characters and they do yeah. not make good characters. Yeah. Like, so in my opinion, Arya Stark is the furthest thing from it because she's gone through hell and back to do it. Sansa Stark, hell and back to do it. Daenerys, hell and back to be able to do what she can do. Yeah. Those are like they they wrote their female characters extremely well. Yeah. So I deny or I reject the idea that she's a Mary Sue. Even Brienne, not a Mary even, Sue. Even worse, Brienne has probably gone through almost just as bad or even worse because like her whole life yeah. has been her having to deal with it up until the moment where he knighted her and she yeah. finally had that thing happen. Um, where do you guys want to go? Do you guys like I, I don't I think we should try to go. We'll thing. just try yeah. to hit the, the highlights, I guess. And whatever. well, I felt that I felt that they sacrificed good storytelling. Mm-hmm. for incredible shot opportunities. So this episode probably had some of the most beautiful shots. Mm-hmm. Like from the dragons being above the clouds, like you mentioned, yep. to Daenerys going through the clouds and seeing the fire from Winterfell. Yeah. Like amazing. Um, the Dothraki lights yep. going out. Incredible cinematic yeah. so, like again <laughs> and then the lights just going the, out <laughs> yeah, and then the lights going out one at, at, at a time yeah um the jurassic park moment with aria in the oh, library yeah. like yep. that's how i see it i see it as a jurassic park yeah. scene like the kitchen scene from jurassic park uh yeah i was actually watching into the episode from like hbo and stuff yep. like that and yep. it was really good how they said basically like the first of it was suspense suspense then horror horror then and action. then action yeah so it was, it was really nice how they did everything and how it transitioned right any other shots that were cool for you? Shots? Uh, or anything to add to that? For On top of shots, I want to say I think my favorite shot was the fire when he goes down and Winterfell is mm-hmm. all in flames and shit. Mm-hmm. One thing I want to add, though, we also kind of mentioned it. Uh, the way it was shot, how it was kind of like blurry and shit like that and foggy. I understand why they did it. Yeah. Because like, that's how they were seeing the fucking thing. And we talked about that at the night sure. of. Yeah. yeah. But I just... I thought it was too much. I thought too like I at times I couldn't tell who the fuck was on screen. I, I feel like, I feel they I could really sacrifice the that. realism of the storm and the darkness mm-hmm. for us to be able to actually see it. Now, again, the HD that was released in the states, mm-hmm. they got it the, a lot better than we did. Mm-hmm. Maybe not amazingly better. And then perhaps on the DVD release, by then it'll be 4K release. Obviously, it might clean it up even better. Yeah. And like they tried to say, oh, adjust your TV. Some people even threw those comments. I was like, well, no, the not, none, none amount of adjusting is going to make a difference to this. The way it's shot and the quality you're getting, especially in Canada, you're not going to get it. That's it. Well, and and that's where it was. Not only was it hard to see, but they cut so much early on. It was that confusing to follow too. Yeah, super confusing oh, yeah. to follow. And and then all of a sudden you're just like, okay, now we're in this person. Okay, what happens? Then we're cutting to something else. And yeah. It almost felt like they didn't know what to do with all of the moving parts that were going on. There was a lot. And then, I mean, I mean they had most of their main characters on the outside of the Winterfell. So, yeah. like, they just had to pan across kind of thing. You had the Grey yeah. Worm. Yeah. And then Brienne, Jamie, Podrick, and then Ed, Tormund, and Beric, and the Hound, I think. And Gandry was out there, too. Yeah. And all your main characters pretty much outside, <coughs> minus, like, Aya, Davos, yeah. and whoever else. Also, the plot armor was thick this episode. Yep. Especially like, Sam. Like, fucking... Guy was, like, in playing Call of Duty Zombies. He kept fucking getting down. He was on the ground, yeah. surrounded. And unfo- he was and the crying. reason... He was the reason Ed died. Yeah, but no one gives a fuck about Ed. Yeah, but still... I, he, he's a he's a minor character you could say like a, a sub sub major yeah yeah sub major maybe not no not even he's minor he's just a minor character he's a minor character and yeah he got off because of Sam even Tormund in that behind the scenes was like the real me was getting it like probably died a few times yeah which means that he should have died in the episode oh for sure and, and the guys were like the creators were like well we couldn't give proper deaths to everybody not everybody deserves a proper death yeah some people just need to die yeah and the this is where I agree with a lot of people is that they went out of their way to subvert expectations mm-hmm. and it uh, ended up ruining the story that they had yeah. built up. And and that's the Last Jedi comparison. That's the Snoke, Beric probably the got, Snoke thing. Beric probably got a deserving ending at the end of the day, like trying sure. to protect everyone and, or like the Hound and I getting away. And but it was kind, kind of, of ridiculous because he ended up being oh, at yeah, the I door could... getting stabbed a yeah. thousand times and then he ended up back in the room to like give Lath's breasts. I'm like... Mm-hmm. 
think last, did I like, let's say last breaths last yeah. last breath of like something have you ever seen that like one movie clip that gets memed all the time it's like kind of a Spanish movie where some girl shoots a guy and he's like ah and he goes to a wall and gets shot again and keeps dying and like takes like no, a minute I have to not die seen that. I, I referenced the Lord of the Rings when uh, well oh, yeah, Sean Boromir. Bean's character got shot like five times with arrows and he just kept getting up and going and the shot like, again there's a um... Not a claymation. I can't remember. It's like a cartoony version. It's, it's a really weird cartoon version, and there's way more arrows in it. Yeah, a whole ridiculous amount more versus like the actual film. He maybe gets like four or five. Yeah, in this cartoon version, he probably gets like ten. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, well, and and you had that, and so you had the callback to season three when like so Melisandre comes, lights all the Dothraki on fire. Yeah. They pretty much made the like they did the Dothraki dirty. A little, yeah. Like you built up this amazing horde coming from Essos. Yeah. And you wipe them out in the worst strategy ever. Yep. And then you wait until they're dead to get on your dragons. And like, uh. first of all, Ghost is alive. I don't know how. Jorah's alive. I don't know how. Yeah, why does that come back? Or, sorry, Jorah's alive. Jorah, al- Jorah was alive at the end of that when they rushed. Sorry. Oh, he dies oh, in the episode. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. I'm like, saying when they rushed. Yeah, it, yeah. And he came he back. He came back. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, How? You couldn't see yeah. anything. As far as this goes, military strategy. Awful. 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 Why waste your charging horde right off the bat? Have they not seen Helm's Deep? The Rohirrim came in and even even the battle at uh, Minas Tirith, like they just plowed through people. Now, don't get me wrong. In Lord of the Rings, they probably do that a little bit too gratuitous. And let they run over these orcs like nothing. I think yeah. the dead would probably pose a little bit more of a problem, but you could still side blind them at the end I'd of the day. I almost disagree because the dead just are, they just go. Whereas yeah. the orcs seem like. So you like think they, you could side blind them enough to just make a path kind of thing? Yeah, because they're just a horde. Yeah. Whereas the orcs, they had feelings. They thought they, they weren't just screaming, like they yeah. can actually speak. That's fair. We've, we've heard them talk. So I think they're more intelligent beings yeah. than that. But that's fair. Uh, listen, I totally get where you're coming yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, there was like that point where Jamie Bran or Jamie Pod and Brienne were up against the wall, and uh, like a hundred of them are in front of them, and Jamie can't even swing his sword well, mm-hmm. but they made it through. Like, yep. there was a lot of that in there that it only makes me mad because they didn't need to go that route. Mm-hmm. They could have positioned things differently to make it seem like, okay, we know they're already a threat. You don't have to wipe out the entire Dothraki to make it seem like that. Yeah. Um, the Unsullied were holding their own pretty well. Grey, but Grey even Worm still, their ranks out. were just very far apart. And yep. they basically got sacrificed by Grey yeah. Worm. It's like no one made a move to the come to come back. Like, hey, start, Well, they were start. supposed to hold it so they can all come I back. I get it, but yeah. you know how many... They were three three battalions deep. Right. You're not telling me that the second battalions could... Or, like, or at least the first could start escaping. The second has enough energy to hold them. Like, yeah. that's, that's the type of stuff, like, military-wise, they could have thought differently. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming. And... Yeah, a lot of that stuff bothered me. Like it just, it's kind of just seems weird. Like this is a bad battle plan. Other than the trench was great. Yeah, they but got they, they used it too late. They used it too late for sure. It was their last minute. But the catapults, they never once like back them up, put them inside Winterfell, just start launching. Mm-hmm. They never even tried that. They they started at the they did at the beginning, and that's it. Anthony, well, the biggest thing that annoyed me was the fact that they didn't start off the attack with dragons lighting up the battlefield. Like I have, told you that today. Have pods, like basically pools of fire. Or just have them streak yeah, fire just, yeah, across, exactly. like create yeah. their own wall of fire that they have to go through. And then at least the Dothraki But can the see. fire wouldn't stay. No, but if it they would... keep going back and forth oh, and yeah. just make those things, because at that point, the Night King was just chilling. And the White Walkers were chilling. And, and the White Walkers were chilling. There was no re- Like, why would you go in there? Yeah. Like, it just seems so dumb, right? Yeah. And then, oh, not only that, why would you set up those... Um, Caltrop things, those giant things that they had the dragon glass in. Yeah. Why wouldn't they set them in front of the Dothraki and then light it on fire and then have them go through? Which that did set up for an, a pretty cool thing where the Night King made them just fall on it. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Like that's the thing. There was really cool moments in this, mm-hmm. but they didn't gel together. No. And a flawed um, military plan. <laughs> yeah, and a terrible military plan. Um Anthony. For what else? Just go. Uh, uh, whatever. I think a lot of people had a problem with like my French teacher getting through talking. Well, he's not my French teacher, but he was my old French teacher. But we were talking, and he said he didn't like how Arya got past all the, uh, I guess was it generals at that point? The dead, the, the yeah, White the Walkers, dead. yeah, and the dead. and all they showed was like that one piece of hair flying through. Yeah, but I think like I think it makes sense because she's like gone to that point where she like you mentioned yeah. how she snuck past 
snuck up on John, who was like on everybody pretty yeah, much. Like that's all she does is sneak up on people. Yeah. And the fact like that, maybe they'll actually show how she did it in a later episode because like people are saying like it was weird how she got through all of them, which I agree. Like okay, in a way that's kind of like mm-hmm. iffy. Like maybe she jumped from something because mm-hmm. as far as we know, they were all kind of. Like, I think the dead surrounded completely, yeah. or did they only, like, half moon it, and then maybe the other side was completely? I don't know. So, talk about... There was regular whites around the circle part, yeah. and then the sons of Craster. Yeah. I keep always, oh, like, looking Walkers, at you, because yeah. the general White Walker, the generals or whatever, I think were lined up behind him. So, there was, like, yeah, a path yeah. that was leaning there. So, she would have had to go through 99 of those guys to get to the Night King. Yeah. And they never actually showed us how she is able to do it. Yeah. But we know that she's able to do it. So that's why for me, I'm like, well, I've seen her sneak up on people from other spots. Like, yeah, I don't see why she wouldn't be able. Like, she's just that good. Like, she's just really fast. But again, she's got training for a real long time to do this shit. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, and then they said that they had to, he had to get stabbed at the spot where he was created, but he actually got created like up here in the chest yeah i think that's a little belly. too specific it's like yeah. yeah you gotta hit right here otherwise it doesn't count death star think. man the death star requires yeah. a perfect shot in the right spot so everybody can go down that's it makes it makes cool. sense that anywhere you stab him where it could potentially like if you s- sliced him on like a little cut yeah i doubt that would do anything a hello kitty band-aid would wrap that right up exactly but then actually stabbing him yeah that wherever it may be i think it would have worked um a little bit of a dance of dragons again. That, that was, was cool. Not, that was that sweet. was really cool. You got a couple of them where like he first went after Danny yeah. and then John came in to kind of take out the. I wish they. I, I wish they were able. To, I, I wish I was able to differentiate the dragons a little bit better in some of those I, scenes. I, I can't tell, but like at one point you're like, okay, who did he bite? Who's this? Who's that? Who's yeah. going down? Who's that? More who's so that? once uh, the Night King was thrown off and falling. Yeah, you kind of didn't know then what was going on very easily. But I, I think we figured out that obviously Rhaegal kind of. Took out the ice dragon for a little bit. Well, he opened up well, the one it, side of his wasn't mouth. Wasn't the new stuff. dragon that died? That was when yeah, came back. the ice dragon. Yeah. So right, that was the one, and that's the one John was facing in the thing. Yeah. Which do you think they've made like John into just like the worst character now? And, and I don't think they're doing him justice. A hundred percent. He's probably at a ninety. Well, and, and <laughs> so the creators once again said, "Well, we want to subvert expectations." It yeah. Doesn't really work that way all the time. Okay. There is there is a level of. This is we're expecting certain things because you've built up these things. Yeah. Whether our theories play into what you're doing is one thing, but we you have you have actively went out of your way Mm -hmm. to show us certain moments that are to come. Well, like John running at the Night King when he's on the ground, like he's ready. He's like almost there. And then he's like And he and he just does that. Like I would have at least liked an altercation between them for like three minutes, and then all of a sudden he does his snow blast, yeah, his sub zero snowfall. And then all of a sudden, when it clears, he's raised up all the dead, yeah. like a cool shot like that. But let's actually have John fight the Night King, because you guys have made a made it really important. Mm-hmm. And this is where a trope and a red herring conversation comes in, where it looks like the Night King has essentially just been a red herring. We're following this thing. And I know in the books, he's very minimal, like he's not as prominent. But the creators decided to make him prominent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the trope is you destroy him, everybody else falls, right? Um, and then the red herring is him being like Snoke, where they build up the importance and everyone's trying to figure out who Snoke is, and we find out he's nothing. It really doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. I know we have three more episodes left. We have a bunch of people that are still alive that shouldn't be alive. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, th- sure, they're going to be injured. And, but I almost feel like this whole long night thing that they built up for since episode one, the first shot of episode one where a White Walker killed that guy, mm-hmm. was essentially used. And someone had mentioned it on YouTube as well. I forget who. A couple people mentioned it. They essentially used this to weed out Daenerys's army mm-hmm. so that it's a more even battle going into the battle for the throne. Yeah. And if they did that, that kind of sucks. And that makes like yeah. a lot of the important arcs, John coming back to life, the Lord of the Light shit, mm-hmm. the dragon coming out of Melisandre's lady bits, uh, yeah. all sorts of stuff that they built up that surrounded the Night King, Lord of Light, Azor High, which they've never actually mentioned that name before, but the prince that was promised. Yeah. All of this stuff, and it almost means nothing. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, the only thing that would save it is if Bran ends up becoming the bad guy of this whole thing, and that's that bittersweet moment where he is actually the villain mm-hmm. in some way, shape, or form. I don't know. Sorry, it was kind of a longer thing, and 
That's fine. You guys go. What do you guys think? I thought the way how they kind of faked out Arya's death was like very good okay. because how like she kind of went like a lot of people hated the controvert or it's a very controversial ending, but how she kind of went somehow to the Night King got like jumped and we were like oh like she, she's gonna kill him then boom like grab her by the throat and then drops the knife picks it up Pulls, slash like what she did it, it was an incredible moment yeah I have no problem with that moment at all what I'm saying though is um did they did they go to that length to subvert our expectations and then all of a sudden take away all the stuff that they set up in the past what four or five seasons if like how you said when you realize it's actually the very first thing you see is all about the White Walkers, yeah. the the lead up to that, I think there's more to come. There's more to it. There's got to be something. I feel I I just don't know how they're gonna fit it all in in the next three episodes, and they're all over, like at least an hour fifteen, hour mm-hmm. ten, hour twenty, that kind of thing. Anthony, do you have an, like are there do you have more questions than answers when this was done? Does it matter? Like I've said it before in the episode where I said it when we talked last week. The zombie thing doesn't really matter to me that much, but at the same time, I can't deny that that's been the focus. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, like again, like I'm not a big Game of Thrones fan. Like yeah. I barely know any of the characters' names at this point. Uh, the one big question I did have, though, is like I didn't, I don't hate the ending, but how does she get there? Like it'd just be cool just to like see the logistics the, of it. Just yeah. in the next episode, if they can yeah. try to like tell like Bran like how she did it. Maybe yeah. they'll do like a um, or how Bran like Bran could see it happen. That's like so common. He shows Bran's view of her like doing it. They'll yeah. do a Quicksilver moment where it's like a slow motion and she's actually like, "Sweet, if dreams. I could put time in a bottle." Yeah, <laughs> she's just like flipping their hair back and forth <laughs> and shit. Um, the music, I will say, when it slowed down. That reminded me of the Light of the Seven. Is that what it's called? Light of the yeah. Seven? Uh, yeah, Light of the Seven. That I, was I thought so too. Beautiful. It was probably had the same tones, but it's probably yeah. it's going to be called something different. It was gorgeous piece but, of music. Uh, and at the at, like when, as it was playing, I'm like, fuck, this how is really good. Everything's happening. You got yeah. a pan to John too, yeah. where he's squaring off against the Ice <laughs> Dragon. Yep. Uh, Jorah's basically fighting for Danny again. Look, it, let's talk her. some deaths. Um, are you guys satisfied with the deaths that we got? No, I don't really care. Doesn't matter. They weren't anything. They were again. They weren't any major characters. They were all minor at the end yeah. of the day. And the no people one that did no survive. One. Sorry, go finish your thought. No, 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 no. That's pretty much. So the people that did, like you, you saying like uh, Jamie, Brienne, and Pod- Pod- Podrick. Yeah, them surviving. I thought it would be like really cool if they died and then mm-hmm. like Arya saved it and then they all collapsed. Okay. But the fact that they all survived. And they were like yeah. this close, like like no, they have knives. Like the white workers have knives. Like they should yeah. be able to just shank below. Yeah, Grey Not- Worm survived, and he was like at the front of the thing. And he ditched too. Yeah, well, that makes him. But even a still, bit of a wuss. but even still, yeah, when they first came and ran at everyone, well, yeah. all of them were in the front. Yeah, and they all survived. There's no way. <laughs> well, yeah, they like went there, lights and went out. They just yeah. came back, and like they let you go back. Like what are they doing? They just yeah. whew, blow out your fucking little sticks or your swords and just said go back. Jorah's death was good to for me, um, yeah. because Jorah's was one of the guys. He's one of our characters from the first episode. So yeah, same with Theon. <clears throat> he's still a minor character, but yep. in in the kind of mi- major p- capacity in that front, I guess. Yeah. Um. But he died protecting Daenerys, which that's his thing. He was protecting yeah. his Kalishi. Mm-hmm. Like that's his. That's been his thing ever since she was able. Like she brought him back and everything. Just yeah. protect her. She's never gonna love me. He's the. He is next to no. I think Ron Weasley was the one that was able to get out of the friend zone. He is Captain Friend Zone. Yeah. Jorah is, and he died. Yeah. In the friend zone, which, rest in peace, Sir Jorah. Sir Jorah. <laughs> um. Lady Mormont died, so I think the whole Mormont clan is done. She died in a pretty cool thing, and I'm I glad so. that she's gone. At first, I thought she was kind of wimping out, but then yeah. you saw she had a re- uh, not. She didn't even redeem herself, but she really just had that moment. She was like, "I'm dying." I'm like, "Screw it." Smallest, done. weakest person versus the biggest person. Yeah, uh, and then Theon. I like Theon's. You know what? I, they did him dirty. As much as we hated Theon once in a while, this is, goes back to their whole military strategy. It's like Theon fought off. How many fucking dead people? Yeah, to sit to keep Bran alive. Like you saw the dead bodies around Bran, and he did a brilliant job. He's a good and fighter. you're telling me he's gonna just charge straight? Not this is like the whole Rickon thing. Well, don't th- zigzag, <laughs> Anthony. Well, if you think about it that way, like you saw the bodies he did kill. Yeah, and after that, like he's tired. Like, yeah, it. you'd be tired, you'd be exhausted, and you'd just be like. You have so much. What do you? What was it called again? Like adrenaline. Adrenaline. Mm-hmm. Where you think like you just put all your power into one attack, and he can't kind of like you know fucking like fucking dodge. Where's it leave. gonna go? Yeah. Exactly. So he just goes straight, give it all he's got, and 
is a fucking shitty thing to do, but that's all he can do. Yeah. I have two things to that. He finally got his redemption True. from Bran. Yep. And I would say, and I think I mentioned this when we were watching it, this is the most human Bran we've had in the like in a very long time. Yeah. He said it very monotone, but it's very yeah. human. Super, yeah, but but again, he, he there was there was something there. Him doing what he did was essentially like, I'm going to die anyways, yeah. so I'm going to go out as best as I can. Mm-hmm. I'm going to run towards my death. I have my redemption. I'm ready to die now. Yeah. However... Bran probably knew that Arya was coming. So why not be like, hey, Theon, just chill here for like 30 seconds. You'll be fine, buddy. So wink. <laughs> well, like, why are you telling him? And don't give me that Doctor Strange thing. If I tell you, it won't happen yeah. type of stuff where it's like, no. Tell me. Tell would me. they let him just stay there? Like just chilling by Bran? Well, if they would have killed him with him, with the white, like with the Night King coming up. However, the other side of it is, okay, him running towards there maybe bought him some time instead of them coming closer to Bran. He maybe gained Bran an extra 30 seconds and gained Arya an extra 45 seconds to do. Like, yeah. There's so much stuff there. Either way, I look at it as more of I'm staring at all the deaths in yeah. front of me. There's nothing else I can do. I'm exhausted. I finally got the one person who I betrayed the most because it started with Bran. Yeah. I can now go to my death and... Die oh, somewhat happy. Rob and then Brad. Yeah. Rob, sorry, Rob and then Brad. Um, I thought it was weird that they lingered on him for a bit. On Theon. On Theon, like you thought, it, like you're gonna come back and like, not, like get him in the ankle, like give him a Achilles shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't. Yeah. What I found it weird. Didn't they like show Ned getting back up when he was dead as a White Walker, but he didn't yeah. actually do anything? Ned, Lady Mormont, anybody that died previously, like they they were yeah. showing their eyes, but they didn't do anything. It was Ed. Which Ed? Sorry, oh. um, the Crips. As I figured, yeah. they were fucked, but they weren't that was nearly always, as fucked as I thought. That was always something, yeah. That it was, was cool always something that they did. there either. No. Did you think Sansa and Theon or uh, Tyrion. Tyrion were almost going to kill themselves? I don't know. I think they would have plot, to... plot armor aside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think there was a point there where like, well, we're screwed rather going out fighting or we're going to Tyrion's just... time to just go out fighting, not yeah. kill himself. Yeah, I thought it was really nice though that Sansa's like you were the best of them. Yeah, I thought that they was had a their really little, beautiful moment. Their their connection there, and then obviously the whole Dragon Queen thing with yeah. <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. She's like they're talking about her. Like she's just behind him. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Gets up, walks away. Which yeah. she had a good point. Like True. if it wasn't for her, then you guys would be even be more dead. fucked. But it's like we're just talking here. We're just riffing. Come yeah. on. <laughs> um, and then even even with uh, we finally get to see like who Bran was talking to from the, all the trailers. He's like, you know, everything you've done has brought you to this point. Yeah. Or brought you back home, as he told sure. the Theon. Sure. So I always thought that was the Jamie. Maybe was that was to the Night King. He wasn't actually talking to oh, the maybe. Theon. Um, so the Bran thing kind of pissed me off because he decided to just go watch Endgame while this thing, the whole thing was going on. <laughs> like, he said, I've got to go now. Uh, I've got a screening at 7.30 <laughs> for Endgame. And so they showed him working into five Ravens or six or whatever. So yeah. that's an upgrade. He's true, upgraded. True, 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 true. What the fuck was the point of that? To just get a visual. I don't know. He was gone for so long. Yeah. <laughs> He's getting the overview shot. For what purpose? Just- I, like, I, at least if he would have, like, because it, all it did was set up that cool shot for the Night King to, like, put his hand out. I was yeah. like, that's cool. But that's all it did. It set up this cool shot that meant nothing, that's at least true. in my opinion. There was a funny meme about that, how they should have attached, like, <laughs> dragon glass daggers to this to the to crows. The, to crows. The crows. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then, like, peck him, and he's well, done. <laughs> and if they would have done something like that, that would have been great. Oh, we only have a, a minute 45, 42 seconds. So uh, in this minute 42, uh, for those of you on the live show, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to keep going for a little bit. So if you want to catch the rest of this, uh, you can find it on Saturday at around 1 o'clock. But everyone else that's listening, we're going to keep on rolling. So some people have speculated that Bran actually went south with the Ravens. That's why he was gone. Could have, yeah. Like, he's actually, like... I'm just going to, you guys deal with the stuff here. I'm already in a chair. I'm going to take these Ravens, see what's happening south, because I can see that we're going to win this thing. Yeah. So I need to see what's going on down there. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? Uh, possible. I guess we'll find out Sunday. Yeah. I guess we'll There's a lot, yeah. lot to be answered. And then, like you had mentioned how it was, and even on, Amelia Clark said it on one of the talk shows. Something about it being a bigger battle than... I, um, no, I, I don't battle think I don't think she was saying to say no because they've always said the battle of Winterfell was really massive. I think Who's one sent? Did you send it to the chat? I can't remember. But anyways, I think it's not so much that it's a bigger battle. It's just more is gonna happen, and I hope they go back to those episodes like in 
like in the old episodes, how there was like very big content, lots of, you know, they'll have a little bit of the battle, but they'll have more story and, Mm -hmm. and see how they can develop this further. Cause at the end of the day, we knew this was going to be just a gratuitous battle. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get major. Sorry. uh, You sent it to me. Oh no, Nathan did. And it says game of Thrones season eight's Amelia Clark. Amelia, Amelia Clark says episode five is even bigger than the battle of Winterfell. Yeah. So who knows what that means? Bigger in the sense of story, I would yeah. say, and bigger perhaps in the main character deaths. Maybe that's why they were saving it. But oh, hopefully, even man. even still, I agree. It's we we should have gotten at least one major character death. I think. I think we should have gotten two. We pretty much have our For entire sure. main cast still alive. Absolutely. Does that bother you guys? Like, while well, this we spent, so they built up this previous episode before, making yeah. it so important that these people are together because they won't be. Davos survives. And Melisandre just decides to walk out. Gendry and like, kind of disappears. I don't really catch him very what the much. What happened to him? He was well. He was at the front. Yeah. And then Not he, anymore. Well, no. And then he was on the he was on the ramparts because when they started coming one by one, they were just hacking at them. And then you kind of lost sight of him. Maybe he got mixed up in the thing. But you get to see who survives in the featurette for the next episode. And yeah, Ghost survives. The two dragons are still alive. I don't know how Ghost survived. <laughs> they yeah, didn't I think show just, like, him. Peaced out. <laughs> like there, there's a lot of again. It just felt like they did stuff to to set up really cool looking shots mm-hmm. that went nowhere, yeah. and that again abandoned a storyline that they've been feeding down our throats forever. John's in- entire story mm-hmm. is basically the White Walkers are coming. I get done. that. I get that. There's the who his mom and dad are and all that stuff, and he's yeah. a Targaryen. Blah blah blah. But his whole thing, mm-hmm. his suicide mission across the wall, the whole going south. The dragon glass, all of this stuff, banging his aunt, all of this stuff was because of White Walkers. Mm-hmm. And they were a real threat. Yep. It wasn't some imaginary thing. And now that it's gone, I kind of feel like you just wasted a lot of my time. Mm-hmm. And there's another part of me that's like, well, if Arya killed the Night King and then Cersei's on her list and she decides to kill the Green Eyes, which I believe a lot of people are speculating that's Cersei. Yeah. Well, then I guess Arya is does everything for everybody and nobody has to do anything else. Like they've just made our OP character mm-hmm. regardless on her training. Yeah. I still wouldn't consider her Mary Sue mm-hmm. because she has all that training and she's gone through shit. But because of that, she just goes, kill Cersei and that's it. Like, okay, that like all we needed was this one character to do this one, two, two things or whatever. She's and, the Goku of Game of Thrones. Oh mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. Going super Saiyan. I don't go. know. Um, next episode. I don't know. I didn't see the trailer you sent. Um, there's some ships. Ships. There's some allegiances happening. Like Daenerys is in that yeah. like hall, and she's cheersing with people. So yeah. I think the North is now on her side. I think maybe they're like finally seeing, and they're willing to fight for her and with her. But I think the allegiances are going to be split. I think the Starks are now going to be on the sidelines. I'm going to see. I want. I'm interested to see if anything of Jon's heritage comes to light in this next episode, or if that's well, it's already gonna... it's already come to no, light. No, no, but... but like to everyone else. Oh, We're sure. ta- Right now, as far as we know, Jon, Bran, Sam, Sam. Mm-hmm. And Daenerys, no. No one and else. And Daenerys does believe it, but kind of doesn't. Is that yeah. still a thing? And Yeah, maybe. And then right and then right now she doesn't have Jorah anymore to fall back on for stuff. Mm-hmm. So she has to trust Varys and Tyrion and Missandei. Yeah. I think Missandei is going to be more of her, a better um, hand or yeah. advisor. I think she's going to push yeah. Tyrion aside. Because I think that, that thing in the crypts is setting up a, a Sansa and Tyrion allegiance or yeah. a Sansa and Tyrion divide unless he decides he'll be like listen it's as good as it's gotten so far i've screwed up i'm uh, switching sides for a bit yeah <laughs> see how they handle all of that but it should be interesting um what else was there uh, yeah i don't know we'll find out on sunday i guess what else we got any closing thoughts any other ideas a little bit of a shorter episode than our hour 47 last couple weekends yeah and my three hour one the time before yeah no nothing really extra so i i guess i got a kind of funny story so i emceed a panel today this is the first time i've ever emceed a panel what kind of panel it was uh for business so it was a business event my business teacher asked me to do it and it was for uh storytelling through social media okay so she told me to like talk about entertain facts so i did the start and uh we had these three people that i just met and I made a horrible first impression, I guess. Or not first impression, just with one guy. Because the two guys were sitting together and one girl was sitting to the right. So I was asking a question. And I looked at the sheet to like see the guy's name. And his name was Chris, I believe. Mm-hmm. I called him Andrew. And I like immediately after I said Andrew, I'm like, oh, so I meant Chris. Well, I just, because they were like 
well, Andrew there, Chris on the paper. Oh, there was another person yeah. named Andrew. I thought you just looked at a Chris and just in your mind went to Andrew. I'm like, how? I was looking at the paper to see their names. I was on top uh, of each other. It was right okay. or wrong. Okay. And I was like, oh, look, I'm sorry, man. Like, I, I said sorry three times. And he just death stared me the whole time. Like, if someone called me the wrong name, like, I wouldn't take it personally. I'd be like, whatever. You know, it's not a big deal. Buddy, my first name is Gerasimo. So you know how many times it's been butchered? But then the second girl, so this was a girl, and I asked her a question. And she uh, was kind of like, uh, she was thinking about it. Mm-hmm. So I said, don't worry about it. Take your time. Mm-hmm. Apparently, I said it very sarcastically, and oh. she took it very poorly because <laughs> when the panel was done, only one guy, Andrew, came up and shook uh, me and my friend's hand who did the panel. Yeah. Said, it's good job. Like, you know, great to meet you. Bye. We, like, we said bye to the other guys. We walked away, and they didn't even, like, look at us. Wow. So one person, you got their name wrong, and the other person, you were sarcastically telling them to hurry the heck up. Yeah. Well, you know what? Can't please them all. I think it was, like, people said it was a good run. So my first time as a panel host went good, so. Yeah, I find a lot of those times, um, I haven't done it too, too much. I did, uh, I was the fake pastor for two weddings. You definitely have to like pace yourself because it can come across as like you're rushing and, and stuff. And I found that was a big thing. That's that my humor though. Like fast. when I MC events, like I like I'm seeing more just because I can make those jokes. I can do my own thing. Mm-hmm. But as a panel, you kind of just got direct questions. There's no time to actually like do anything else. Well, it's not the right spot to be mm-hmm. humorous, I guess. Yeah. Figure that out now. So. Add drone flare. <laughs> yeah. Um, 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 I think that's it. Yeah. Was there, was there anything else? Are you going to go see um, Endgame for another for a fourth time? I might. I kind of want to see it for a third I wanna time. Because I want to actually see it non-3D mm-hmm. to get the full colors. And well, I guess the go live's gone, so if we want, we can just say anything about Endgame. It yeah. doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah. Not that we're going to, but... Two past ones. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, it went so fast the second time. Like, it was fast the first time, yeah. but the second time, I was like, it was done. Next thing I know, we're at the end. I'm like, holy shit. And I told you guys in the chat, I cried so much more this time. I, guys, I'm telling you, yeah. like, there was, I welled up the first cup, like, the first time I saw it, maybe in four or five spots. I legit, tears were streaming in three. I'm excited, though, to see it again, because this time, if I need to piss, like, I can actually go, because I know what happens. <laughs> so I don't have to, like, be sitting there, like. And you know when to leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's one important. Of my friends, the thing that pissed me off, people at high school just went to see this movie without seeing a single other film. So, Bell. Wow. I called them out when I said this movie wasn't for you. Because for those who are listening who haven't seen the movie, I won't say it, but that one Captain America scene, mm-hmm. Abel was like, oh, why did he do that? Like, that doesn't make sense. And I'm like, oh, my God, go I said, home. I said, have you seen any of the other Marvel movies? No. I'm like, why the fuck did you watch this? This isn't for you. Like, yeah. Go watch it. I honestly think that aside from the first Hulk, Iron Man 2, and not even Iron Man 2, because even Iron Man 2 had that scene with his dad, like when he's looking at the video and he finally realizes that his dad loved him. Yeah, yeah. Um, that and 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 Captain Marvel, those are the two movies. Incredible Hulk the first and Captain Marvel, in my opinion, are the two movies you don't need to see. You can just go into this, but you, a lot of people are like, oh, you can go into this and it, it'll you'll still enjoy it. No, you won't. That's Infinity War. That's like a full brawl, and it's mm. it's a villain story. Like they devoted an entire movie to Thanos. Yeah, and I also thought about two other things. One, we were all complaining that Captain America was barely in. Infinity War. Well, now we know why. At least I was like, I wish I would. There was more Captain America, but you know. And the other one is, I, I realized this when I uh, yesterday night, and I was telling Soph about this. They're fighting 2014 Thanos, and this crew is five years after 2018 Thanos. So they're past so their, they're not their prime necessarily, but, but they're, they're older. Iron Man's been retired for five years. Thor got fat. Hulk toned down like all of this stuff like these guys have not been uh, in their top thing yeah and it almost makes it better because if the infinity war crew was all together and did it they probably could have made something happen yeah and that's what makes this one so much better and i talked to jimmy about him like they were fighting the mad titan in this game they were fighting another oh, he, Thanos altogether. I in, said it the last in, time in it, infinity was, war. it was vicious he was malicious he had a he had a helicopter weapon yeah but like just the brutality against even Captain because he, he got his ass beat for a split second there. Yeah. And then he just came out swinging like nuts. And that line of uh, something about personal, I'm going to enjoy ripping yeah. your... T- like, th- that Thanos would never have told Tony Stark, I respect you. Yeah. Uh, you have my respect. Half of Earth will live when I'm done. Yeah. The Thanos that, we in- that was in Endgame was the one that needed the full force of the Avengers, of everybody. Yeah. And also... <laughs> This is another little jab. 
I still, I, when the second time I watched it, I loved the fact that Captain Marvel was not a part of the Avengers Main. Assemble yeah. part. <laughs> that made me, the second time I watched it, it made me so happy well, because I kind of forgot. Avenger in the movie, didn't she? Like you said, like, I'm not a part of this. I just kind of came to help. No, no, no. But she said, like, you guys won't see me for a bit because yeah. she's got other planets. But you can, there's a couple things that I noticed that it, it felt like it, Captain Marvel was like Ultron. The Russos had a tough time figuring out what to do with him because he's such a powerful character and you kind of can't have them do mm-hmm. everything because they could like uh vision sorry vision not ultra vision kind of didn't do anything really yeah he was and definitely he doing a tv show because he has a tv show coming scarlet out scarlet witch and the vision one division or one division well the the thing is this is an infinity war thing they said like sherry actually had time to download <clears throat> some vision bit. so now that she's back mm-hmm. she can say hey by the way i yeah. saved your boy <laughs> kind of thing there you go Happy uh, birthday. Yeah. yeah. He's a sex toy. But I still don't know <laughs> if it re- if it confirms all those rumors that I was reading about how they didn't want her. But, like, it definitely seemed like they didn't have much to do with her. Like, they from, didn't know what to do with her. From what I understand, even with, like, all the press bullshit that went on, they did basically put her back in her place for a second and let her know. Have like, you seen some of those? No. Holy shit. Like, in, there's in, a, in, in things? There's an interview. So, they threw Brie Larson with all the Avengers and a lot of these press screenings. Yeah. Or the, the press stuff. I saw the Chris Hemsworth one with Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah. My kids love Wonder Woman. Did you oh, see sorry. the Don Cheadle stuff? So, but there's something interesting here because I can definitely come across as biased on this topic. You can either see it as they know that the internet doesn't like her, so they're playing into it, and they're actually joking and everything's cool, or they actually don't like her. But there's one with Jeremy Renner and her, and, like, the body language on Jeremy Renner is hilarious because... He was talking about, like, I try to be good in my real life. I don't need my stardom to make me a better person or whatever. She went on this, like, topic of, like, how she's using it to make her better, make the world a better place and all that other stuff. And then the Don Cheadle, Chris Hemsworth, and Brie Larson one was so funny. And I just, from my eyes, it looks like they're just fucking, like, we don't like you. And we're, like, just don't screw this up kind of thing. Because mm-hmm. it looks like you're screwing it up. The thing is, though, if they really wanted to, they'd be more than happy to recast her. I don't know if they if, will. If it got that bad, to that well, extent that she's, it made now, money, so that's not it's that's yeah, out of the window. Now, I think it wasn't I don't like know. an Iron Man one situation where it's kind yeah. of early enough to do it. Yeah, exactly. Like they can't or like the it. Hulk, mm-hmm. the first Hulk, they recast yeah. the Hulk and they were able to do it. But she's also now like for a lot of women, a lot of people like a lot of women do like what, uh, Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. So it's not like one of those things where you can just replace her because a lot, not a lot of people care for her. like replacing Black Panther. You can't do that shit now, no matter mm-hmm. what he does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Spider Man. Reboot, but you know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, but I don't think you can in this new iteration. Actually, before we finish, do you guys care about the next slate? I care about it, Spider-Man. I'm yeah. not really like super excited. To, I'm not like, you know, can't wait to see it, but I'm excited to see a Spider-Man film. Like, I, don't, it's, it's, I don't think we'll be as in, nearly as invested. Doctor Strange 2, and I heard Black Panther 2 coming out like 2021. I honestly don't give a fuck about. I, yeah. I like the Doctor Strange one. So I'll I'm, I'm going to be excited to see that one mm-hmm. come back. And Black Panther 2, whatever. It'd just be interesting what kind of villain they we'll come see up far from home and what they set up in their end credit scene and it's last true okay fair enough fair enough i i'm finding it hard to actually care especially if they're putting brie larson at the forefront like if they're wanting to make her the new lead of this whole thing first of all i don't want them to do another avengers movie for another 10 years it probably won't happen second of all i they don't need to bring back tony stark as a voice in a suit or something for somebody else yeah i think that would take away from his death yeah um personally they don't need to bring back cap yeah, um, I think they're going to change the name of that show to Captain America and the Winter Soldier, which I think would be really awesome. I heard someone mention that in another podcast, and I'm like, because yes, he's now Captain America, he is now Captain he's America. Like, he's not no the Fal- longer Falcon anymore. Yeah, he's just Captain America. Which so that would be someone amazing. else going to become Falcon? I don't think so. No, I don't think they so need. So he's it. still going to don his wings, but he'll have that. Too. I think well, in, in the comic books, that's what he does. Yeah, oh, okay. he has both, which is a great combo, yeah. by the way. Especially when you saw him fucking stab that dude with both his fucking Falcon wings. Um never heard someone more excited about Falcon before my life. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love I, and, Oh, it's so good. Um, also, last thing, what do you guys think the box is going to be? What do you guys think the whole entire Infinity Saga How much do you think it will cost? Thing? I was talking to Jesse about this. 500 bucks. Fuck, I thought I was going to say 200. That was high end for me. I'm like, fuck. fuck. <laughs> no, it might, it might be less. Fuck, I don't know. No, five. Uh, around. Five is a lot. I w- I'm going to say it's going to be like three, four at most. Three to four. Because yeah, they'll have the... They'll, I, Doubt they'll have regular DVD. Guarantee yeah. that's gonna be dumb. They might have digital. Oh yeah. So you'll pay whatever you'll pay. But I'm I'm the type of person I'll go buy a nice box set. That's what of I'm saying. Like, like that. I'm thinking what they're gonna design yeah. a really nice box set with. I think what would be cool. 
um, I think they already have a phase one, which is the box, the Tesseract. The Tesseract. They have a phase two, which is, um, the hell is phase two? I can't remember. Oops. But yeah. Yeah, they do have one for the first two phases already, but they're definitely going to put the Infinity Saga all together. Do you guys have a lot of movies on DVDs already? Not all. Uh, a lot in the original DVDs. I have a few in Blu-ray, but there's a decent... I think we have a couple. Current, like the Iron Mans, I think, are Captain there. Captain America 2, Captain America 1, Guardians, Guardians 1, Thor Ragnarok. I've got Infinity War at home. I have Iron Man at my house. Yeah. That's because you borrowed it from me, right? Oh, yeah, you gave it to me. Have now. you seen it yet? No. You still haven't seen it? No. What? You went into Endgame and you haven't seen the first Iron Man? Well, I've seen it. I just don't remember it. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. for a second. We literally just had a conversation oh, of seeing this stuff. We have the first Thor. The first Thor, yeah. I think um, the Dark World is in here somewhere, but I would have put it there. But uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to have, um, I'm, I'm definitely going to want to buy that box set. And then I'm going to make a video and post it on our YouTube of me taking Captain Marvel out of it and throwing it in the garbage. That's I'll what I'm going to do. Of money. No, because I paid for the rest of the movies, not like, what fucking if you Captain to... Marvel. What if you just want to put it on a shelf and then you're missing one movie? No, it depends what it looks like. Yeah, it's a bit much. Or if it's like all in a box. No, like you I don't can't. need. I don't need a. I don't need a show that goes out of its way to retcon the entire MCU when I have a bunch of movies that help elevate the. All MCU. right, let's not get started. Again. No, we won't. Okay, what else we got? Nothing. No, nothing. Nothing. No. It is now time to close shop. Thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of The F Word. Once again, if you go back, you can find my full three and hour, five minute breakdown with Jimmy. We did one with Infinity War. So you can if you want to really go back, you can go take a look at listen to that one. Um, I think, again, still our highest rated one. And uh, are we going to do anything special for our June 1st two, two year anniversary? Or are we just going to just. Well, I don't know. We can think about it. we got a couple months. Yeah, July I guess. 1st, isn't it? Uh, July 1st. Sorry, you're the one. that Yeah. Um, Anyway, so yeah, go back. You can catch the Infinity War one, then an Endgame one. Again, we break down the whole movie. We talk about things that we love to, you know, and and yeah, there is some nitpicking. It's not just a full love fest, but it's pretty close to a love fest. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. You can find me on Twitter at the F-words G. If you still want, we still got an email at the F-word podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you're following Entertain Facts on Instagram and the F-word podcast on Instagram. We got a Facebook as well, the F-word podcast. Is it just the F-word? I keep forgetting every time. F-word podcast. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to write this stuff down. Um, you can... Find us on YouTube, Spotify, Anchor. I mean, you're most likely listening to one of those right now. Uh, and if it's anywhere that you can rate it or give a thumbs up or a like or just a subscribe or whatever, I think we're just we're slowly etching over that 900 subscribers. And uh, that's about it. Uh, thanks again. I'm G. Been your boy, Big of the Fs. Envy. Envy. You envy. And B. And we're out. <laughs>